Welcome to My Decadent Life and the first episode of Hairdresser Happy Hour. In this episode, we're going to be drinking a little bit of cold brew with a chewed on straw from my preschooler. And we're going to be talking about dry shampoo. Shall we begin? So I am a hairdresser. I've been a hairdresser for over 10 years. I sort of don't know exactly how long, 11, maybe 12 maybe even almost 13 by now and dry shampoo has really come a long way from when I first started in fact I'm trying to remember the first couple cans of dry shampoo was it maybe by Paul Mitchell I guess I can't even truly remember I bet TG had one and they were really dry really hard to work with nobody knew what they were doing I think Kevin Murphy had like a wet dry shampoo that that was just a full-on disaster I think that that was one of my first experiences and I remember standing in my bathroom before I was supposed to be at hair school and I only lived a few blocks away and I often rode my bike to hair school rubbing this like wet product into my greasy hair thinking that it was gonna save me time <laughs> And I don't know exactly how that hair day went, but I'm sure I begged for shampoo as soon as I had a free um, little period of time that day. I have a little bit more experience with it. Um, I thought I would take a few moments and just share a little bit of info with you guys. So there are different kinds of dry shampoo. There are companies that are coming out with foams and there are products that are uh, like technically like a wet dry shampoo that you're supposed to sort of work into your dry hair even though it's a wet product and maybe re-dry it with your blow dryer. Um, I really want to focus on this more you know traditional style that a lot of people gravitate towards I think just because it's easy. I'm gonna just touch on this for a second. Um, there is always going to be something in an aerosol can that is going to make the product propel out. So as somebody who's trying to create a little bit of a cleaner ingredient environment in my salon and in my life, I sort of have an internal battle with that. However, I have sort of bridged the gap and decided that I'm going to trust um, certain companies more than others and the ones that are really working towards um, using greener practices and cleaner ingredients in their product products and just sort of um, kind of lay that in their hands for now. I don't recommend doing that with all companies, um, but some of them I think are really doing things in the right direction. If you want to steer clear of any of those propellant type products, any denatured alcohols, then I would recommend using a dry shampoo that is a powder. Um, one that you would sprinkle in your hair. Oftentimes the ingredients would be like bentonite clay, activated charcoal, kaolin clay, maybe some silica would be in there. Um, those are all great products to use, you know, without needing to have this spray type of can. But I'm finding that this is, for some reason, the, the most common style that people will want to use and that hairdressers are recommending. So again, this is what we're gonna be talking about today. I actually, trick number one, recommend using your dry shampoo on your clean hair the day that you shampooed so whenever that is at least before you go to bed so if you shampoo in the morning go ahead and use it in the evening before bed if you shampoo in the evening and you're gonna try to dry your hair before you go to bed then put your dry shampoo in as like a prep product before you go to sleep even though you just shampooed your hair reason being is if you can counteract the oil from even really getting on your hair that is what's gonna help to prevent your hair from getting oily so your scalp is gonna produce oil regardless but when you spray that product on your skin and your new you know or your fresh sort of root hair it's gonna create a barrier it's gonna be like that powdered bar powdered, powdered barrier that's gonna protect that you know couple inches of your hair from getting the oils from your scalp onto your head now this is a little bit of this like sort of you know gray area so to speak because it's really actually good for our scalps to produce oil and to moisturize your hair but the world we're living in we're not really utilizing it that way and since people were wanting to go this many days in between shampoos you kind of need to do something or you probably will get an oilier scalp. The longer I go in between shampoos with using dry shampoo, 
my scalp sort of slows down its oil production. Another thing that helps your scalp to slow down its oil production, and I don't mean slow it down to the point of it not being healthy, slow it down to the point of not being overly greasy, oily, I hate the word greasy, um, is to just in general stop shampooing with water so often, you know, so getting in the shower, sudsing up your hair, soaping it up with soap and stripping all the natural oils from your scalp. And then the other thing that keeps happening is people are afraid to use their conditioner on their scalp. So I want you to think for a second that it may be similar to if you were to suds up your face and never put moisturizer on it. Um, right away, your face is going to feel really dry. And then probably like the next day you wake up, or in the middle of the next afternoon, your face may actually get really oily because it was so under hydrated that it overproduced oil. So dry shampoo really can be a beneficial player in helping our scalps not be over oil producers. But what we want to do is make sure we're using a conditioner that doesn't contain too many silicones or dimethicones or just those sort of ingredients ending in cone, which can oftentimes coat our hair. Even good professional products have a lot of silicones in them that can coat our hair and also our scalp. So if we're going to want the best, so if we're going to really want to take good care of our scalp skin, I recommend using a very clean ingredient shampoo and conditioner that do not contain too many silicones and dimethicones. Um, and then actually working your conditioner into your scalp and really massaging that in when you take the time to do a shampoo and condition so that your scalp is being hydrated so that the oil glands can have a little bit of a break. So now that I gave a little bit of a prep, I'm just going to hop into it. I'm going to show you how I do it. I'm going to use my trusty um, wet brush. Um, this is not super duper clean. It's not super dirty either. I try really hard to keep my hairbrushes at home clean, not as clean as my ones at the salon. But this is a wet brush that is containing some bristles as well. Um, it's still fairly clean. What I do is I just take them in the shower with me and I actually use my brush to brush my shampoo through my hair, which helps to clean my brush. And then I use that same brush to run conditioner through. And then from there, it's fairly clean and I just take it back out of the rotation. So you wanna make sure you shake your product really, really well, which I've sort of already done. And I would maybe even use a clip um, if you have a lot of hair, but I don't, and so I'm able to pretty much do it without. So um, it doesn't really matter where you start. I'll just use my little part line here as reference, and I'm going to get plenty far away. So this Loma Dry Shampoo contains, um, I'm trying to look for what it is again, because now I don't remember. It is rice starch and tapioca starch. And those are both really, really, really popular dry shampoo ingredients. And they, you know, if you picture rice or like tapioca starch that um, if you ever have done any like gluten-free baking, you maybe have used tapioca starch. Um, they're just finely milled powders. And then it also contains silica, which is really good at absorbing. It gives your hair sort of this like textured kind of feeling and absorbing or almost repelling that oil. Um, I need to look a little bit more into silica and its role in being sort of used like silicones, but um, for the purpose of dry shampoo, I do feel like it is different than the silicones that are being used in conditioner. So um, if anybody knows more on that, please put it in the comments, but just know that I'm gonna look into that. It's just hard to find that information on Mr. Google. So, okay. Then I'm going to in this dry shampoo, just spray out really light. That does not mean you cannot use it if you have dark hair. Because ideally, and then I'm gonna hit my we all have that colic that likes to look like you are bald when you have it split. So essentially, I could just go to bed, and on the nights when I'm really tired, I call that good. I just hop into bed with, with it like that in my hair. But ideally, I would sort of comb that through a little bit.
and just make sure I got all of that hair. So now you could go ahead and put a braid in, you could prep it up in a high ponytail if you wanted to, and if you're going to sleep in a ponytail, I do recommend using like a nice, thick, soft scrunchie, something that isn't going to be a tight elastic band, um, but you'd be ready for bed. If people get, if you're in the beginning stages of using dry shampoo, or you get really, really oily, it's okay to go in and do just like another strip, kind of right down your really oily places, like maybe right around your temples, or your part line, but that essentially would be it. And then in the morning, when you wake up, chances are your hair should feel almost as good as it did the night that, or when you went to bed the night before. Um, I usually will either spray my hair a little bit or just spray my brush a little bit and sort of re-fluff. I'm trying not to get too much product worked through the ends of my hair because really I'm just wanting to work it through the root. Not that I can't get any through the ends because it does help to refresh your ends too, but you don't really want them to get too dry. And if you needed to, you could always grab a little bit of a serum or an oil or some sort of a hair cream and work that through the ends of your hair. And then another thing you can do is grab your blow dryer and if you wanted to take, you know, a clean version of a wet brush perhaps or maybe even a round brush and just reactivate and refresh your hair with your blow dryer because that heat will do wonders on your second day hair. A lot of people don't think to use their blow dryer. They always just go to their flat iron, but the warmth of the air and then the actual like power of the air and the brush kind of working together will really help to give your hair the most voluminous and refreshed look. So don't be afraid to grab your blow dryer and use it even though your hair is dry. Um, couple things to keep in mind if you are going to do that is you don't need to have your heat and your air on like super high full blast. Turn it down a little bit. Give your hair, you know, just a little bit of like, hey, it's already dry. So we want to be gentle when we're <laughs> redoing something like that. But it really isn't much different than if you're going to take your, you know, hot flat iron or your hot curling iron. Um, hopefully you already have heat protected in your hair from when you you know, shampooed and styled it the first time. So if you are spraying any extra thermal protection into your dry hair, just make sure that it's either kind of like a drier product that's being sprayed in. If you're using your flat iron or your curling iron directly on it, or, you know, if it is a hairspray that it's intended to be used as a working spray, not necessarily a finishing spray. And some finishing sprays are intended to be used both ways, but some hairsprays you can have heat on them and some hairsprays you do not want to have heat on them. So just make sure wherever you are getting your product from um, that you're maybe able to find that out and that you're going to be able to use it appropriately. So um, that is my dry shampoo routine that is super simple but just a little bit of extra information. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to just use it at night before you to go to bed. If your hair already has gotten oily it's just gonna make mud when you spray that starchy product on it so put it in your hair let it be the barrier to protect it from your oily scalp and just give it a little bit of time for your scalp and your hair and you know everything to kind of find its balance and to stop being so over oil pro producing enjoyed this dry shampoo demo and i hope you learned a little bit of something um i didn't want to go you know too in detail about everything but i wanted to skim over at least the basics so you could kind of understand why we're using dry shampoo but what we can also maybe do with our shampoo and conditioning routine to just keep our scalp really really healthy so the product I use today is by Loma, but I also really enjoy the dry shampoo from the company Numa. I do carry both of them at my salon. They are both ingredient conscious companies and they're making stride in producing their products the safest way possible and to take better care of our world. So these are the two right now that I'm liking the most for more reasons than just how they feel in my hair. I just think they're great companies. Um, I would like to make the hairdresser happy hour, maybe like a weekly or bi-weekly kind of um, episode. Let me know if you think that would be fun. I can do little, you know, hairdresser kind of like, I don't want to say necessarily like secrets, but like behind the scenes kind of things. Um, and just some of those like tips and tricks 
um, that as a hairdresser, we sometimes maybe forget to talk to you about when you are in the salon chair because we have a lot going on when we're actually at the salon together. So if you think that would be great, please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I would love it if you would subscribe. So thank you everyone for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye. Kind of.